Hey everyone, thanks for joining Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and in today's video, I'm going to teach you how to play Unlikely Heroes Vikings. This is a new game by Ludo Studio. It is a one to four player game that takes roughly one to two hours to play, and it's a fully cooperative game where all the players are working together to complete whichever quest they've chosen to go on. So in this game, you get to play some of these Vikings that are unlikely heroes. These poor guys have the worst luck, but it all seems to kind of work out in the end, or so they hope. So you are going to be going on a quest of your choice where it's going to take you through a number of different chapters where you're going to have to explore the lands and put together the narrative mystery, solving and finding new items, improving your characters as you go along, hopefully to solve whichever mystery and complete whichever quest you've chosen to go on by the end. If not, things are going to go bad quickly and you'll ultimately fail and have to choose another one to go on. So in this video, I'm going to take you through teaching you how to play starting with components, setup, player turns, and end game conditions. As always, if you find these videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button, subscribing to my channel. It's one of the easiest ways you can support channels like mine so we can continue to grow and be able to produce this content. If you want to be notified anytime I release new videos, also consider hitting the bell so you get notifications anytime I release new stuff. So let's head to the table and I'll teach you how to play. Let's start by looking at the hero cards that players can play as at the beginning of the game. So each one of these cards is going to give you a little bit of a backstory or flavor text for your hero. It will have the S at the top corner, which lists it as a starting card. Then each hero is going to have a name and their color meeple that they'll use. And there's also a number in there, which is the maximum number of cards you can have in your backpack, which will go off to the side of your card, as you're going to see a little bit later. Then each hero has an ability that can be triggered at various times and there'll be keywords with these that I'll go over a little bit later as well. And then you'll have your energy slots. And this is where you're going to be placing energy cubes. And at the start of the game, if you have energy slots that have the highlighted lightning bolts, you'll gain a cube for those. And you'll place it in there. You'll notice with some heroes that they have a darkened energy slot that is not lit up, which means that that's an extra slot that when you gain a cube, you can choose to place it in there, but you will not start with those. Finally, each hero is going to have three stats. There's strength, wit, and dexterity, and these will be modified by items that you'll add later in the game that you'll get throughout the game. During setup, each player is going to get to select a starting item, which will have the S up in the top corner, that they will add to their hero, and this will be their starting item for the game. Each one of these items, again, is going to have some flavor text. We'll have the S up in the top corner, signifying it as a starting item, and then we'll have modifiers to your three different stats. Some of the areas will be blank and won't modify, and there's going to be a whole little deck of these items that players will get to choose from. When a player makes a selection, so let's go ahead and say that I chose this spell here, then I would attach it to my hero. And this will be the first item in this hero's back backpack and will modify all of their stats. So now our hero has one strength, two wit, and minus two dexterity. So he is very, very slow. Next, I want to go over the encounter deck. This is going to be the massive deck of cards that you're going to be drawing from throughout the game. This deck is going to contain four different types of cards, map cards, heroes, items, and challenges. And I'm going to go through each one of these in more detail and explain how each one of them works when you encounter them. The one exception to this is I'm not going to reveal the new heroes as there's only a couple of them in the deck and I don't want to spoil too much, but they work exactly the same way as the heroes we've already covered. From there, then I want to first start off by looking at map cards. So the back of each map card is going to list the number of that map card, along with the narrative text, which is going to give you more information about you, what you might find on the other side. Next, we have the adventure pack icon, and this is going to be the same icon for all the cards of that particular pack. As you, in the future, you'll be able to buy expansions that will add new quests and chapters to your game. Finally, some of the cards are going to have clues that are going to be reversed, so you don't have to reveal that and read it if you don't want to, but if you're feeling stuck or unsure, go ahead and read this as well, and that is going to outline uh, additional clues that might help you on your quest. Once you reveal a map tile, it's going to have all kinds of different anchor points on it that you can explore or travel to throughout your turn by spending actions. And I'll go over that more during each player's turn. Each one of these will have you draw a new card of that number when exploring or encountering that. For example, if I move off, if I choose to explore location six, then I'll draw the number six card, read its effect, and then if I choose to go there, then I'll reveal that card and line it up next to this card. 
and this will provide me with new options that I can explore. The next type of card I want to look at are challenges. And as you can already see, all the backs of the cards are going to be pretty much the same. And so reading through the narrative text is going to be key to giving you clues on what you're going to find on the other side. Now, once a challenge is revealed, it's going to give you the name of that challenge, more narrative text to, to tell you what's going on, and then the challenge itself. Each challenge is going to list a skill and a number that you must achieve or get greater than in order to accomplish that skill and get the rewards on the side. Now, some skills are also going to have icons on the side that will affect that challenge, such as this green one here. This is the joined challenge, which means that if heroes are in the same map tile as you, they can join in and potentially help by lending their skills to yours. Then you have the force challenge, and with this one, you must complete this challenge even if you fail it, you must take it again until you have passed this challenge. And again, I'll cover these more in detail later on in the video. And then as you can see with some challenges, they simply are going to list the skill you need and the number and then the reward and there won't be any other icons. And the final type of card you're going to find in the encounter deck are items. Again, the backside will be the same for items with a narrative and a number as well as the pack icon. And then on the other side, you are going to find the item that you have located. These are again will have the number of that item along with narrative text and the type of item it is. Underneath some of the item numbers are going to be additional numbers where you'll either discard a card, as you can see here, you'll discard card 50 when revealing this or other ones will have you drawing an additional card or cards. Then each item is going to have the three different slots and any modifying numbers in those slots. And some items will also have effects, whether they are effects that will take place all the time or effects that you will gain energy cubes and will have to spend in order to activate. With some items, once you've spent all of the energy cubes or you place another item on there and remove energy cubes, that item will be discarded. So for example, with this item here, the Dark Ruins, when you've used all the energy cubes on that item, then you must discard it to the discard pile. The luck deck is going to contain 20 cards and is also going to count as your party's life in a way. This deck will be drawn from whenever you are checking for challenges to see if you've completed them and will have a variable in there where you don't know what you're drawing and could be anywhere from negative numbers all the way up to negative three to positive numbers all the way up to three depending upon the difficulty you've selected. Now some of these cards will also grant you an energy cube which you'll be able to add to your hero's board if there's an open slot and I'll cover this more during setup on how to create your luck deck. Anytime you're required to draw a luck card from the luck deck and it is empty, you go ahead and reshuffle the discard pile to create a new luck deck. At the end of your turn, depending upon the number of times you've had to reshuffle that deck, you're going to have to draw an out of luck card for each of those times. These cards will remain in play for the rest of the quest or until your quest says otherwise. Each one of these is going to have a nasty effect. For example, with this one, you're going to add a minus two wit to all heroes. Or this one, the minimum luck draw is going to be increased by one. So these will make the quest harder and harder to complete. And at any time you draw one of these, you're also going to want to reference your quest as it might have you reference a story section in the back of the adventure book, which might end your quest in failure. So be careful and regulate your luck cards because drawing these is going to make it harder and harder to complete your quest. All right, so we're ready to move into setup. To start off, go ahead and grab your adventure book and choose one of the quests you want to go on. In this adventure book, there are three different quests you can choose from, the Ruins, the Mead, and the Undead. If this is your first game of Unlikely Heroes Vikings, go ahead and choose the Ruins and go ahead and read the origin story as it's going to give you a little bit of a backstory about your heroes and their unlikely luck and their quest to hopefully redeem themselves. So from there, then you're going to start off with the chapters. Each quest is going to be broken down into a number of chapters, and each chapter is going to give you an objective as well as other information. So as you can see here on this guide, it's going to first tell us that we're going to draw encounter five to start off with. Then our objective for this one is to gain Chieftain Eek's tre uh, Tomb Secret item to continue to the next chapter. And our fail condition is if you have to draw an out of luck card, then we're going to read story 09, which is in the back of this book that you'll notice. So from there, then let's go ahead and set up this particular chapter to start the game. So to start off, you go ahead and grab the encounter deck. First off, before starting the adventure, make sure that the encounter deck is in sequential order, starting with one and working your way down, and that all the cards are on their back side, do not reveal their front side. 
From there, with the R chapter, it said that we have to draw encounter card five. You can go ahead and read that encounter card. So it says, here stand boulders of rough granite placed carefully on the top of each other, making towers. One of them is decorated with the rock bear's family crest depicting a bear claw. I'm not going to go ahead and read the clue to this. And then from there, I'm just going to flip this over. And this is going to be our starting tile. From there, the rest of the encounter cards can be placed off to the side. You can store them in the box to organize them or have one player handle it however you want to do that. So I'm just going to place them off to the side to start off from here. For character setup, go ahead and choose a character you wish to play as for the game and gather their card. And then also choose a starting item from the selection of starting items. You can choose anyone you want to. I went ahead and chose the purple spell. This one gives me plus one strength, increasing my overall strength to one, plus one wit, which increases my overall wit to two, and negative one on my dexterity. So not so good there. From there, then you'll also gain your meeple based on the color of your character. And then the final step is to gain a number of energy cubes. Each spot that you have that has the yellow lightning bolt, you can place a cube on. If a spot does not have the yellow lightning bolt, you will not place a cube on it. So with my character here, I get to start with two energy cubes. To create your 20 card luck deck, go ahead and look at the luck deck table as you can see here and choose the difficulty of the game you wish to play. For my game, I'm going to go ahead and set up for a normal game. So I'm going to need two negative ones, eight zeros, eight ones, and two twos. Any cards you're not using can be returned to the boxes. You won't need them for this game. And then there you can gather up all of the 20 cards and shuffle up that deck to create your luck deck. The last step for your heroes is to place their meeples out on the starting tile. And you can place those anywhere you want to. Then you can also place out any additional cubes that you have in the area where all players can reach them. You'll also go ahead and place out the luck deck you just created within reach of all players. So I'll go ahead and place that over here. And you do the same for the out of luck deck. So I'm gonna go ahead and place that above. Make sure that you have the adventure book in reach so that you can reference it when needed. At this point, the last thing you need to do is choose one of the players to be the starting hero. And once you've done that, then you're ready to move into the quests starting with that player's first turn. Unlikely Heroes Vikings can be played over one session or multiple sessions as there is a save feature that allows you to quickly and easily pack the game away and then quickly set it up and resume where you left off at a later point. From there, moving into the game itself, you're going to select one of the players to be the starting player and you can do this in any manner you want to. From there, then that player will take their turn and during each player's turn, they get to perform two actions from a selection of different actions. Once that player has completed those two actions or chooses not to perform any additional actions, their turn is over and it'll pass to the next player in clockwise order. This is gonna continue going from player to player until the players collectively have met the objectives of the particular chapter that they're on currently or they've met the fail conditions for that chapter, in which case then they've failed the quest and they'll have to start over or there'll be other conditions depending upon the story selection that they have to read in the adventure book. So from here, I'm going to take you through each one of these actions that a player can take during their turn in more detail to show you how this works. Moving into my player turn, I went ahead and selected Bjorki to be the starting player, and I'm just going to use a token that I personally have to mark that player so that I always know which player I have. There is not one included in the game. From there then, during each player's turn, that player can perform two actions from a selection of three different actions. The backpack action, the explore action, and the travel action. I'm going to go through each one of these in more detail. Before getting into that, there's one other important thing that I want to cover, and this is up to you as is your personal preference how you want to do this. Now, in the rule book, anytime you explore or check out a anchor point, which you can reference at any time, you just cannot flip it over unless you spend an action, which I'm going to cover in a minute, but you will be drawing them from the deck. In my games, I prefer to have them out already. So anytime I have a new location that comes up, I will place out all of the different anchor points on that location. So for example, with this one, it's going to have a six. So I'm gonna place the six next to it and the 11 down below. And then 52 and 50, I'm just going to place off to the side here. That way then I can reference these at any time reading through the narrative on the back side of it. And I don't have to continue to go back through and then I can see which ones I've done and which ones I haven't. Again, this is personal preference and totally up to you if you want to do this or if you want to play the game by the rules where you're simply going to be drawing it from the deck and then adding it back in there when you're done. 
So from there, let's go ahead and move into the very first action, which is going to be an explore action. This action allows you to choose one of the anchor points that is on your map that you're currently on, wherever your, your meeple is, and to explore that by reading the narrative and then flipping it over. Again, you can choose just to read the narrative on the back side, and then once you, you read it, you might discern that there might be something bad on there or something that you might not be able to handle, in which case, then you'll leave it back on the table face down. You will not reveal it. That way, you you can kind of see what's coming before you make that choice. But once you spend the action, you must flip it over and then resolve its effects, whatever they may be. So for example, let's go ahead and say with my player's turn, I'm going to go ahead and explore the anchor point six. So that is going to have me reading this card. So you see, see a strange and mystical place. A crystal formation of turquoise radiates at a godlike color glow between four natural def nature defying stone structures with ruins carved into each of them. You cannot stop looking its way. So I am going to spend my action. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over and reveal it. And then as part of that action, I can also choose to move my meeple to that location if I want to. So let's go ahead and say that I do. And then again, at this point, I can place out those other points if I want to. Again, this is totally up to you how you want to do it. That would conclude my first action. Now, explore action can have all kinds of different effects. You're either going to, again, when you explore, you're going to find a new map tile, a new hero, a new item, or a challenge. And I'm gonna go through each one of those in more detail as well, so you can kind of see, except for the hero. So I'm, with that, I'm just simply going to explain how that works. If you flip over a challenge or a new card and it happens to be a hero card, then you can choose to either replace your hero immediately with that new hero, keeping all of your items and any, uh, any of the energy cubes you have with that new hero and then simply discarding your old hero back to the box where you won't be using him anymore this game or you can place the new hero in the box and not use him but you can use him at a later point in a later chapter if you want to as well all right so going back to my previous example let's go ahead and say that i chose not to move instead and i simply just explored that location and revealed it so as my second action, let's go ahead and explore one of these other locations to see some of the other effects that we might run into. So for this one, let's go ahead and say that we look at location 50. So again, you're going to go ahead and read through the narrative. From out of nowhere, a knife flies through the air and just about misses you. Out of the shadow steps a fierce warrior, another knife clinched between her teeth. Her eyes are wild like that of an animal, and it seems like you have entered her hunting ground. So at this point, then I must spend that action to go ahead and reveal and explore this. So let's go ahead and do that. So we find Bodell is mad with rage. Her face and hair match in such an outrageous, beautiful red color that you for a second get lost in your imagination as you ponder if it would look good on you. But sadly, fashion chat is not what is on Boyle's, Bodell's mind. You better find some strength to withstand her challenge. So with this one, this is going to be a challenge, and it's going to show, as you can see here, that we're going to need a strength of three to pass this challenge. And then if we can, then we're going to receive card 51. Now, this challenge does have a couple of icons next to it. First, we can have a joins challenge, which means that any hero that is in the same map tile as us can assist us in this, sharing their skills with us. And then it is also a required challenge, which means that we have to continue to do this challenge until we pass it. Now that is not going to consider or will not be considered another action. So if we have to do this challenge multiple times, it's still only gonna count as one action. So with that, I think I am going to ask for some help as my character only has a strength of one and I would need two more to pass this challenge. So we just so happen to have one of our other characters in here, Toki, and he has a strength of three. So adding his whole strength stat to ours is going to give us a total strength of four. From there, once we have decided on that, then we're going to reveal a number of luck cards. We have to reveal at least one luck card per player that's helping. So one for my player and then one for Toki. So that'll be two cards. Now we can choose to announce that we're going to reveal additional cards, but we must do this before we start flipping luck cards. And then once we flip luck cards, we have to continue doing so until we have flipped the number that we have announced. So let's go and say that we're only going to flip over two cards. So at this point, we have to flip over both cards, no matter the result. And so our first card is a zero, so it doesn't add anything to it but it is going to give us an energy cube 
and that will go to our active player. So Bjorki uh, here is going to receive it. And then the second card that we, we said was the negative one. So this is going to subtract one from our overall result. So right now we're sitting at four. So that is going to bring us back down to three. But at this point, we have successfully passed that as we have met that requirement. Now, the other important thing is if you have an energy cube, you can choose to strain yourself by spending one cube, which will allow you to draw one additional luck card if you need to or if you choose to. So that is another option. So if we would have had such, for example, a negative two, then we would have been at two points of strength and not had enough. So we could extend our, our, our make ourselves or strain ourselves to hopefully try to get that by drawing that one extra card. Or if we had an ability or something that we could activate by spending a cube, we could also do that now. But once we have totaled up our number, that is going to be the final number. And then, so with this one, we are going, we are successful. So we're gonna draw card 51. So then I will go through here and pull out card 51. So this one, again, we're gonna read the narrative on it. So it says, the red hair and knives fly so fast and close by that you feel the sensation of air hitting your cheeks. Your only way out of this bind is to pull her thick red hair. In a sudden move, you grab one of her knives and cut off a chunk of her hair, resulting in her lifting her hands in the air as a sign of, a sign of surrender. So from there, then this card, as you can see here, is a knife. So we have her knife here. This is going to have us discarding card 51, so we'll, or 50. So we'll take this and place it in a discard pile off to the side. And then our active hero gets to take this card. So he would add it anywhere on his backpack. So I could choose to add it here, or I could add it first and then cover it up with the card on top. Now this card does have an ability on it. So I do wanna kinda of keep that on top is this other card underneath it does not. Or I can choose to also pass this card to another player that is in an adjacent to me. So anybody that's on my same map tile, I could choose to pass this to instead if I wanted to. Now, if I didn't have any room left in my backpack, I have to choose an item to discard to take this item, or I can choose to discard this item. Now my backpack, I can have four items in it, and right now this is only the second item, so I'm okay there. Now this particular item does give me an additional perk that I can activate and it doesn't cost energy cubes which is nice so from here that would conclude that last action so that's three out of the four different things you might find when you explore the last is simply an item so let's go ahead and say for example that I had one extra action or I had another action or something. Let's go ahead and move on to the next character. So at this point, let's go ahead and pass this over to Gunder and he is going to start his turn. So let's go ahead and say, for example, that he explores point 52, which is this one here. And it says, take a moment to investigate the boulder with the family crest of rock bears. Below the crest, the story of the fearless rock bears enlightens you. All right, so this one is, it's a tale, a history lesson. You are getting wise, my friend, you exclaim with a nod of approval, knowing in truth very little about how one acquires wisdom. You feel your knowledge grow and you almost understand the essence of luck. So with this, this is an item. Again, you can add it to your backpack, anywhere in your backpack. And this one also has a reveal effect. So as you can see, it says reveal, you're gonna restore two luck cards. So we just happened to uh, use two luck cards. So we would take two luck cards from the bottom of our discard pile and shuffle those back into our luck pile. So we'll just go ahead and place those in there somewhere. And then you can shuffle that up as well if you want to give it a good shuffle. So that's, that's there, all right and then this item can be added. Now this item does not have any stats and is not helpful in any way. So you could choose to, after resolving the effect of that, also just discard it to the discard pile if you chose. So let's go ahead and do that and get rid of it. So those are the different things you're going to find in the explore action. The next action we're gonna look at is a travel action. This action is going to allow you to move up to two spaces in an orthogonal direction, which is either north, south, east, or west. You cannot move diagonally. So for example, let's go ahead and say the Gunder's second action is a travel action. So this would allow him to move his meeple to an adjacent tile or up to two tiles away. So there's only one other tile revealed at this point. So he's going to go ahead and move over there. From that point, that is concluding his turn. So then we would pass this on to the next player to go.
So the final action I want to talk about is a backpack action. This action is going to allow you to trade an item with a character that's in your space or give him something or swoop, uh, swap things around or discard an item from your backpack. From there, those are the three actions you can choose from during your turn. And again, once you spend an action or once you complete your two actions, your turn is over. You don't have to complete all of your actions. You can also choose to forfeit the rest of your actions and pass your turn to the next player. Now, the other important thing is that you can take the, the same action multiple times. As you saw, I did an explore action multiple times with one of my characters. So that is also allowed, or you can travel multiple times, however you want to do it during your turn. So now that I've covered the three different options for an action you can perform during your turn, there's a couple other important things that I want to elaborate on a little bit more. So first off, each character has an effect they can activate at certain points during their turn, or in fellow heroes' turns, depending upon if there's any keywords in these slots, such as adjacent. From there, in order to activate this ability, you must spend an energy cube to do so. The other important thing is when gaining items, such as this item here, if we ended up finding this item and gaining it, when we gain it, we would add it to our area. And if it's the top item, we're also going to gain two energy cubes for it as there's two highlighted energy symbols on there. Now, the other important thing on this one is that you're going to have that little symbol down here in the corner. So if we end up spending both of these energy cubes at any points during our future turns, once we've spent that last energy cube, then this item is going to be discarded if it is out of energy. The other important thing is if we get another item and cover this one up, then we get to place these energy cubes on another item if there's a slot. But then when this item gets all these energy cubes get removed from it, it also will be discarded before we place the new item in that way. So in this way, you have to be careful on how you place your items or if you want to keep the active abilities on an item going for longer. There's also a couple other important things I want to go over with challenges. So first off, if you accept a challenge or go on a challenge and you fail that challenge instead, which I did not cover before, then this challenge is simply going to be returned to the stack. Or again, if you have it out, then you'll simply flip it back over and another hero can try this at a later point. Or if your hero has not another action, they can also try it again and hopefully be successful the next time. The other important thing is, as you see here on this icon, some challenges, a very few of them, will have a little meeple in there as well next to the number. That is going to have a multiplying effect on the number of, it, of heroes that are playing. So for example, in my game, I'm playing with three heroes. So if I had a meeple here, that three would be multiplied by the two. And now I would need a wit, uh, successful wit check of six instead. So depending upon some of the challenges, they're going to be a lot more challenging than others. The next thing I want to go over real quick is with your luck deck. So again, if you run out of luck cards and you're required to draw a luck card during your turn, so let's go ahead and say that we have to draw a luck card for a challenge we're going against. At this point, since we are out of luck cards, we'll go ahead and shuffle up our discard pile, creating our new luck deck and continue our turn. At the end of our turn, once we've completed our actions, then we're going to have to draw an out of luck card since we reshuffled our luck deck. At this point, we would apply the effects of that card, and then we're also going to reference our chapter and see what happens with that. So with the ruins, the first one here for the failure is if you draw an out of luck card, you're going to read story 09. So we're going to flip our book over and go to story 09 to find out what happens with that. Now, this might end our quests or in a failure, or it might have us doing other things. So with this one, I don't want to reveal too much, but it might have us do other things or allow us to continue on with other effects or simply continue on. Now, once we've met the objective of our particular chapter that we're on currently, then we will go ahead and start a new chapter if we want to, or you can save at that point and put your adventure away and there'll be a number of, of saving dividers that will allow you to, to put this away and each one of them is going to tell you how to do that. From there, some you will not have to take away any of your explored cards to continue on to the next chapter. You'll keep everything as it is. Now, some of them will have you reset at a certain location, which will have all your meeples move to that location. And then you can continue on playing with the heroes taking turn after turn. And this will continue until either you choose to stop and save or you have, you have completed that quest, at which point hopefully you've won the game. So I hope this video helped you and we're learning how to play this game. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Also, let me know in the comments if there's anything else you want to see around this video. Until next time, I'll see you later.